This is your host, C. Edward Kelso, Editor-in-Chief out of Coinspice.io, back with another episode of the Coinspice Podcast. It's been a while since I've done an intro, uh, a formal intro to one of these things, but I wanted to give you a few cautionary tips as you listen um, to this particular recording. One is, as you can hear, my voice is uh, less than the velvet fog you are used to, uh, that sultry croon that I normally have. Um, I've been a little sick uh, lately, a little under the weather. Uh, does not stop the spice. It must flow. Um, so I apologize for that. I'm sure it's not fun to listen to. But I had a chance to record with uh, Cindy Wong, uh, f- direct from mainland China. And she's a cryptocurrency journalist that I think most of you probably know or at least are relatively familiar with. Uh, she does a lot of translation work. Um, she's very cued in to the uh, peer-to-peer electronic cash community there in China. And I know this sounds really stupid, but when we started recording, I'd kind of forgotten about the coronavirus. Now, I, some of you are probably shaking your head like, what is wrong with you? Um, and I agree with you. Like, uh, I'd kind of forgotten. I didn't forget, but it seemed to me like sort of beside the point. Like I just kind of wanted to get on with talking about crypto and things, China. And I soon realized how ridiculous that was and so as you're hearing the conversation i stumble a lot now if you're a regular listener i stumble all the time so that's nothing unusual but i stumbled quite a bit in this interview and and i'm sorry that it's flat it has nothing to do with cindy wong Uh, she's perfectly uh, wonderful and uh, normally she and i laugh and have a great old time and uh, but you'll hear uh i kind of find it hard to talk about cryptocurrency when someone's quarantined <laughs> i don't know it just puts it in perspective uh to her credit uh cindy you know tries to connect it and, and she's a great sport and she tries to make uh the interview uh, relevant to uh, cryptocurrency and why we would want to talk to her on coin spice um but um yeah I, I think you'll hear there's there's a definite lack of verve and joy that that i normally bring and, and guests normally bring uh, to the podcast just due to the seriousness of what she's going through as, as you'll hopefully listen uh, so I wanted to let you know that that's what's going on uh, that it's all me that I suddenly it dawns on me that geez maybe crypto is not the most important subject to talk to Cindy about right now uh, but uh, in any case uh, that's what you're about to listen to it's um, arguably one of the most important episodes I've ever recorded uh, gives you a on the ground sense of really what's happening in mainland China right now and uh, what it might mean for cryptocurrency without being exploitive, you know, without uh, trying to take advantage of the situation. On, honestly, I, I totally forgot. Like it was kind of, I was going to do it in passing and then, you know, obviously it, it, it tends to take over the conversation. In the show notes, uh, do me a favor, do Coin Spicers a favor. Uh, Cindy's uh, Bitcoin Cash address is there. Uh, if you've got a little bit of change, uh, you don't mind sending her away. Uh, That would be very, very cool of you. Uh, She does amazing work uh, to bring uh, Bitcoin Cash and and peer-to-peer electronic cash literacy uh, to the Chinese community. And boy, could she use your help. Um, I think that's all I'll say there. I I don't want to give too much away about her personal situation, but safe to say she's going through it, fellas. So anyway, without any further ado, here is the episode Thanks so much for listening, and thanks so much for supporting, and thanks so much for for giving my uh, my lackluster performance in this one. All morning. right, so we're back, and we've got the great Cindy Wong. She's a crypto journalist. She's been around for a while, and you probably know her work or have seen her work or have at least been uh, impacted by it, maybe without even knowing it. Uh, she's a translator as well, and she's based in China right now. But before we get too much further into all of that, First off, Cindy, thanks so much for coming on the show again. Hello, Kenzo, and every corner who is listening to the podcast. It's Cindy. <laughs> so great to have you back on. Um, now, you know, obviously you're in China and you're not in Hong Kong. You're on the mainland, right? Yes. How, you know, the, the coronavirus, the, the novel coronavirus, uh, we hear a lot about it here in the United States and around the world, but uh, you're actually living uh, with its uh, with its impact. Uh, 
how's life there? How, how are you being impacted by it? Um, well, first of all, we can only go outside three times a week to buy uh, some life necessities. And uh, second, oh, there are nowhere to buy masks, so we better stay at home because you are not sure who has the virus outside. And uh, the officials are still haven't reached agreement about how the virus being spread. It's like one day they say it is spread by uh, saliva, and the next day it becomes simple touching. And now they say it can be spread by air, so we better stay at home. But I actually think uh, the virus is good for the crypto space. You think it's good for the crypto space? Yes. And 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 so how many? So before we we get into why it might be good for the crypto space, um, how many days have you been inside? Um, the uh, the officials asked us to stay at home for two weeks, but actually it's been twenty days. Wow, you've not left uh, your your home for twenty days. Yeah, twenty days and. For those employees who went back to their hometown and now they come back to city and they want to work, they need to stay uh, at home for another two weeks before they can go back to job. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Unreal. Um, so you you said that that it might be the the situation in kind of a strange way might be good for crypto. Why why do you say that? Um. Be- because generally after the Chinese Lunar New Year, um, there would be capital pour into the stock market. But now as all companies are closed and the stock market has a really bad performance, so investors are looking for alternatives. And I believe cryptocurrency is definitely one of it. This is probably why we see this recent jump. Wow, I would have never thought that. That's that's really insightful. So perhaps people are are looking to crypto as a as a safe haven, uh, temporarily at least, uh, away from the stock market, and that goes kind of hand in hand with some of the news we've been reading last year about the government uh, opening up a little bit, um, if not to cryptocurrency, at least to talk of blockchain, um, and uh, being a little bit more receptive about it. Have you seen a change in government attitude towards uh, crypto and blockchain? Yes, and uh, let's take this uh, coronavirus for example. So in this event, a lot of people want to donate money to people who has the disease and to people uh, locked in Wuhan, but they don't trust the Red Cross and other charity organizations. Mm. And there are actually officials who propose to use blockchain technology to treat where the capital goes. This is definitely a good thing for the blockchain industry. Right. And as you were talking, I was thinking it also eliminates kind of the need for, in terms of uh, regular sort of hard, I guess, paper money, uh, the need for person to person interaction. So it actually could be safer to, to, transact in crypto right yes and actually last year we see a lot of uh, provinces are encouraging people to um, to start up with blockchain related businesses and they have blockchain industrial parks wow and does that necessarily mean that they're because in the United States and in the West we sometimes use blockchain as a euphemism, um, as a placeholder for crypto because businesses don't like the, the word cryptocurrency. So they just sort of cover it up with blockchain. Is that kind of what's happening here or, or am I I'm missing something? Uh, I don't think so. I, I see after the Xi Jinping's speech last year, local governments are really trying to attract some blockchain talents. And and does do you think they're going to open up more to crypto? Um, I'm not sure about that, but yeah. actually, um, we see a lot of unexpected events in the beginning of 2020, like 
the conflict between America and Iran and now the virus mm -hmm. in China. So um, I, I think more people will seek crypto as safe saving assets, right? And actually we see um, topics like Bitcoin, uh, I see topics such as Bitcoin reached uh, uh, $10,000 again. It's now actually a trending social topic on Chinese Weibo. Mm. So that means more common people will see words like Bitcoin and other coins maybe more and more this year. That's really interesting. And in the Bitcoin Cash community, um, we had a, a bit of a, an interesting happening when uh, the BTC Top um, Mining Pool founder, um, I think I, I always mispronounce his name, but I believe it's Zhang Zhuo. Is that right? Yes, Zhang Zhuo. Zhang Zhuo. And he proposed the infrastructure funding plan for Bitcoin Cash. And it got uh, quite a reaction uh, in the West. And before we kind of get into your feelings about it, um, he, I, I think in the beginning, uh, if people aren't familiar, when he, when he first wrote it, uh, he basically talked a lot about uh, Chinese philosophy, um, political philosophy especially, and um, how he was trying to move the community from um, talking, talking, talking all the time, which is kind of what Westerners do. They like to sit around and talk about things rather than do something. And so I, I believe what he was trying to say was that, you know, the time for talking maybe is over and we should experiment with something. Um, but how he said it was the sort of the, the no debate theory. And uh, yes. we, we won't debate it. Um, now, you are obviously Chinese, you live in China, but you've also had a lot of dealings uh, with Westerners. Uh, do, did, did you see the conflict right away? In, in, in what he was trying to say versus how it was received in the West? Um, about the Bitcoin Cash mining development plan, because I ask people to vote for or against on Chinese social media. And I also checked messages on Twitter and Telegram groups. I realized that actually the Chinese BCS community is generally more supportive of the plan because they are like, um, it's a Jiang's idea and it's only a temporary plan, so why not give it a try? And we all know we already abandoned a similar plan last year in Hong Kong, so we got to make this happen. But the Western side is more like, ah, uh, the plan is uh, so out of blue, it, it is so sudden, it is done without a wide community discussion. And they worry the miners want to um, want to control this Bitcoin cash by this proposal. So I, I really see a huge gap between these two communities. It is interesting. And so f I saw on uh, Twitter, you were, uh, uh, you were attempting to translate um, some of the articles from read.cash and, and other places uh, for the Chinese community. And so you found the, the Chinese uh, uh, to be more receptive to a funding plan of some kind, right? Yes, definitely. But but I think one of the reasons is that Jiang Zhuo is really influential in the Chinese Bitcoin Cash community and people tend to listen to him. And because he is a big miner, he is a big Bitcoin Cash miner. So people generally don't question his intention because we believe no matter what he did, it, it must be uh, be that he wants to he wants Bitcoin Cash to have a bright future, so no people question his intentions. But I don't think Jiang is as that influential in the Western community, so that's why people tend to question his intention and they worry he wants to control Bitcoin Cash. Yeah, I saw that he actually came out with a with an updated version. Did did you read that or see that? Uh, yeah, uh, the initial version, he mentioned that uh, miners would give 12.5% of a block reward to mm -hmm. uh, developers. But for the new one, he mentioned uh, the percentage should be dropped to 1% to 3%. 
and and have you got a chance yet to kind of get um, the Chinese community's uh, reception to sort of his latest update, or are are they aware of it? Oh, people are all aware of it, and I think the Chinese Bitcoin Cash community as a whole really support it because we all think it is just a temporary thing. It will do no long time harm to Bitcoin Cash. So it's it's kind of a you know let's try something, let's do something uh, to make sure that the development gets adequate funding. Yes, absolutely. Do it first and. Let's see what will happen later. Hmm. And what's the general feeling of of Bitcoin Cash? I, I don't even know if you've if you're prepared to answer this question. Um, I didn't think to uh, to ask it before. But what's your general feeling if, say, um, because I know Bitcoin.com kind of pulled out and they said, well, let's talk about it some more. Um, and I noticed in the second uh, draft of the plan that uh, um, Zheng didn't list, you know, Jihan, he didn't list Ipo or, any, or anybody. He just sort of said, this is my idea. Um, what happens do you think, and again, this is kind of an unfair question to ask you, but what happens do you think if, if nothing goes through, say, in May, do you think the Chinese uh, Bitcoin Cash community will be upset or, or do you think they'll just kind of roll with it? I think people will be really upset because I can see people talk about the plan in WeChat groups every time, uh, every night. They're like, why all this wide and tedious discussion? Why not just do it first? So I think if people, if the proposal failed again, it will definitely greatly undermine people's confidence. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that being a danger. and. What's the general feeling towards Bitcoin Cash as a whole? Um, are people liking it or are they moving off of it in China? Um, are they embracing it more or does it all have to kind of come down to uh, the, the funding proposal? Mm, well, because Bitcoin Cash, uh, the price of Bitcoin Cash has been rising since the beginning of 2020. So I realized more people are becoming embracive to Bitcoin Cash. And recently, um, I got a new title. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Uh, it's a Chinese uh, crypto forum called Bi, who is it's something like a combination of Steemit and Reddit. And Bi, who uh, recently opened a Bitcoin Cash sub-forum and invited me to work as moderator. I've been um updating some articles about bitcoin cash on the forum in the past uh, 52 days and now i have 1400 followers so i think wow. yes 100 1400 followers in 52 days so i believe mm, more people are becoming positive uh, positive to bitcoin cash and and you see this is having to do pretty much with with the price um wh what would you say i mean does it does the popularity then in china for cryptos kind of follow um their price or their market cap would btc be number one and then ethereum and then ripple and so on and so forth um btc is always number one because we have a lot of holders um who always believe the price of bitcoin will uh, be to the moon but ethereum um ethereum actually ethereum followers is kind of following because this year we see more um really weird coins like bsv has been pumping in a really weird way and it kind of uh draws a sec draw attraction of attention away so i think uh ethereum is now you see Ethereum followers are definitely following. And um, Ripple, we don't have uh, too much too many people talk about mm. Ripple in China. That's interesting. Oh, but we have uh but recently OKB, the exchange token of OKEX is also mm. a hot topic. And and why is that? 
um, because OK, OK, OK token has uh, used to have one billion in total, but uh, they recently announced to destroy 700 million. So it means it only has 300 million now. Hmm. So, so the inflation rate is is dropped quite a bit, and yes. I guess people are kind of betting that it'll it'll retain more value that way. And uh, OK always have a good relationship with uh, governments in Beijing, so people are now really see bullish on OK token. Hmm. And do you think going forward that's going to be the key for uh, for cryptocurrency projects in China? is to have a, a good relationship with, with the government there? Mm, well, it's a hard question because for startups, it's important for them to get uh, investment. But for, uh, uh, for industrial players like exchanges, they definitely need to keep a good relationship with governments. Uh, just like Huobi, they now move their office to Hanan because mm -hmm. governments ask them to do so. Hmm. And what's the, uh, the the general status of of mining in uh, in China? Um, we always hear um, about different uh, things going on. Is it is it still doing well? Is is mining still a, a big industry there? Well, I think Jiang Zhuo are a uh, posted something like his uh, one of his mining farm uh, is violently shut down because of the mm -hmm. uh, coronavirus that definitely caused some uh, panic but i think the mining business in whole um is doing great it's doing great for the moment just for the moment but the the virus could could change things huh um, yeah, the virus could change the mining business mainly in two ways. Um, first, as many, city, as many cities are under lockdown, that means mail service will be delayed. And since employees need to work at home, it would be become difficult for them to assemble and expand new machines. So mining manufacturers are facing delays in both, uh, both in delivery and production. That's unreal. And, Go ahead. And as as mining farms um as mining farms are mostly located in remote areas, so they remain unaffected for now. But as Jandra said, the local government banned one of his farm because of the quarantine control. So um I think it means you cannot construct new farms now. Yeah, it makes sense. And this is impossible. Again, completely unfair to ask you this, but is is there an outlook? Like, can you see a um, kind of a positive horizon for uh, the virus? Like, is there any is there any good news of late? Or it's it's very hard to tell here in the West. Um, uh, the uh, the Western press likes to um, scare people and and you know show these crazy videos and so on. Uh, it's hard to know what what is really going on, but uh, is there any good news about the virus? Like whether they have it under control, or whether you think uh, things will get better soon, or 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 do you even know? Well, honestly, I don't know because there are so many rumors about the virus, and everything I learn is from television. And you know what television means? They they tell what they want you to know. So mm -hmm. there are no ways for me to know. Uh, information that they don't want me to know. <laughs> right, right. It's a crazy, crazy, crazy issue. Wow. And so, your is is your work being uh, affected? You, you kind of mentioned to me a little bit, but before we started recording, um, how how are you? I mean, you obviously you're inside um, your your home now for days on end. Um, but are are you able to work? Are you able to do, um, you know, your journalism work and so on, or have you had to also adjust there? Well, actually, I uh, you actually interviewed Akani before, right? Yes. 
So uh, actually me, Akani, and another influential girl called Tammy, we three uh, co-founded a company called Satoshi's Angels. Right, right. I, I know Tammy as well. Awesome. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about uh, Satoshi's Angels. What, what are you guys doing with that? Uh, well, Satoshi's Angels is a Hong Kong-based company that, that aims to help crypto projects grow user base and promote businesses. Because me, I'm from China, Akani is from Japan, and Tammy lives in Korea. So it's like uh, we three represent three biggest uh, crypto markets in Asia. Mm -hmm. And now as the crypto market starts to recover, we are looking for clients who have marketing budgets and want to promote their projects in Asia. So that is kind of what we've been, what we are been doing. We are looking for uh, clients who care about uh, the Asian market. And we need, to, we need to let people know what Satoshi's Angels is all about and how we could help them to build a community and organize uh, live meetups. Yeah, I can't think of three better um, marketers uh, there than you, uh, Kane and Tammy. Um, <laughs> I... I think if you if you have a company and you're looking to crack the the Asian market, uh, there wouldn't be any better uh, than you three. And so the idea is to push for meetups, um, obviously uh, virtual communities, and just getting the word out about whatever project hires you, right? Yes, uh, actually, uh, tonight there will be uh, tonight BTC Dotop founder Zhang Zhuo will do an AMA. And uh, Satoshi's Angel sponsored that AMA. Oh, very nice. And uh, wh where's the AMA at? Uh, it will be held on the on B who at oh, the I Bitcoin Cash sub forum. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. And this is kind of what you guys offer. You offer a, a way in. So if um, there are Westerners who are looking to um, make their uh, make their entry into uh, Asian markets. Uh, you guys would be the place to go to. Um, how can they How can they find you? Uh, we have an official website, satoshisangels.com. Okay, and your work in particular, um, which we'll we'll also link to in the show notes here. Um, how can people find you and and follow you? Uh, me, I have my own blog, cindydaily.io. Okay, and, and do you want them to follow you on Twitter as well? Uh, Twitter, Crypto Cindy, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll link to it uh, as well. Wow. Um, I, I wish we could have had you on under better and more festive circumstances because you're so much fun to interview and... Uh, uh, you know so much about uh, the crypto world, especially uh, the Chinese community. So there really is no one better to talk to about it. Um, I just can't help thinking, um, you know, what a horrible situation you're in. But um, anyway, uh, we're going to try to uh, we're going to try to help you where we can, um, as we spoke earlier. And uh, hopefully, people just keep supporting your work and support you through Satoshi's Angels and all that great stuff. And, and we are definitely rooting for you. Um, thanks again for doing this. We we really appreciate it. Well, yeah, welcome. <laughs> and I'll leave it's it there. not like I have a better way to kill time at home. <laughs> <laughs>